Welcome back. So today we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the recent two events, Enlisted in general, and kind of just the state of everything. So we're coming right out, right around the end of both the April Fool's event and the Engineer event. Um, honestly, I think that both events have actually been pretty good. And Enlisted kind of needed a win, especially given everything that's been going on lately. I mean, there's a ton of issues in the game that have yet to be addressed. There was the whole Steam debacle. In a lot of ways lately, it's been a bit of a shit show. But the event is coming to an end, and... I think we're going to talk about the Engineer event first, and then we'll talk about the April Fool's event after that. So, there's about three-ish, two to three days left of the event, so if you haven't finished getting it, you're pretty much out of time. You've got enough time to get another couple days done, but, you know, you might have to think about golding things if you're not somebody who had Stalingrad and you haven't finished yet. Generally speaking though, I think the format of this event was really well done. So, just to recap, I'm sure most of you have engaged with the event, but for those of you that didn't, it followed the same 20,000 points in two days format that we've been using, but the reward track this time around was appearances, cosmetic, hammer, the first squad, a portrait, the second squad, more appearances. And it had the added benefit that if you had Stalingrad, you didn't actually have to grind it out. In addition to that, they had the each stage random box reward, but I actually think they did a really good job this time around. I was pretty disappointed with the squad that we, or the pair of squads that we got in the New Year's event. They're perfectly adequate if you have nothing else, but after coming off of a year of getting paratroopers, which I'm sure you've heard me harp on about this a million times now, but the paratroopers had one-to-one -one parity with their counterparts, and that the value in that cannot be understated, especially when... You take into account, I say a year, but it actually wasn't quite a year. It was from about June, July-ish until December. We had events every time that we got an event that gave paratroopers. Now, starting in January with the New Year's event, we went back to an old format, which was, here's an event squad. The event squad is similar to a premium squad, but without the premium bonuses. And I, there's a broader conversation that needs to be had about premium squads. And in the next week or two, I think I'm going to try to put together a video discussing the changes that I would like to see with premium squads. But to, to sum this all up, we got a German squad that looked like Christmas trees, or not a German squad, a Russian squad that looked like Christmas trees, and we had a German squad that they actually look pretty cool. To be fair, they both look pretty cool, but the draw to them is that they're assault squads, they have, uh, I guess, assault rifles. But it's like one engineer, it's four assaulters, and for anybody who's even made it to BR4, there really wasn't a good reason to run them. Like, if you, if you look at it from, like, a free-to-play perspective, right? You're thinking, do I run the four-man squad, or the five-man squad, with an engineer and four assaulters? Sure, they've got assault rifles, but they're mid. Or, do I instead run the tech tree assault squad that's, like, seven men strong? Yeah, they don't have assault rifles because you're a free-to-play player in tier four, so... The best you've got is probably a Beretta M38 or uh, an MP35, depending on you know what your what your preference is. 
But, like, I think I would rather take that, because I can still take the Engineer, I can take AT. If I'm a free-to-play player who can only bring three infantry squads, I need to pack as much of a punch into those three infantry squads as I can. And then if you look at it from, like, my perspective, I'm done with the German tech tree. So, I'll throw on things for fun, but if I default to a lineup, that default lineup is going to be tech tree squads for the most part, and, like, premiums that are pretty unique. So, I'm going to bring a paratrooper squad. I'm going to bring two-ish assault squads, and there's no way that that assault squad is going to be anything other than a tech tree assault squad. And that's mostly because they just bring so much more value. Now, we had a similar thing happen with the event after that with the half-tracks. I think there are a lot of ways they could have addressed those half-tracks differently. I think the number one is that they needed to, at the very minimum, mirror their tech tree counterparts. There's no excuse for them not being full six-man squads. Like, at this point in time, after we've gotten the paratroopers and established what an actual event squad should look like, that's what we should be getting. They don't need to mir uh, mirror the, the premium squad where you can bring more specialists. To be entirely honest, it's really good, but at the end of the day, I don't need all of that in a half track. I would have been happy with it just being a six man squad. But at least to me, because of the way they handled the German one, I really do not like it being a BR3 in the current state of the current matchmaker. I just don't think it fits there. I don't really like that they gimp them on crew size. I just it's an event that I really want to like. But to be honest, it's a huge bust to me. But I know I know other people liked that event, so th this is just me. I think the little gremlin that the Americans got is pretty cool because it's quick, but you can absolutely fit two more people in there. And to be entirely honest, I don't care if it blocks my teammates from spawning in it until after my squad gets out. To be honest, I'm happier with that. I don't need my teammates just sitting there with their thumbs up their ass while I drive to the front. It's nice that you can do it in other half-tracks, but if I have to give up two dudes that could be sitting where they are, I'd rather have my extra two dudes. Which brings us to the current event, where we got these engineers, and they have some drawbacks, like they can't equip submachine guns. But to be honest, they're in a pretty good spot. Even if you play them down, they both have resistances, and, and it's kind of a gimmick, but it's really cool. And it kind of makes up for them being less customizable, because they don't have specialists, they're just an AT, or uh, an engineer squad. That being said, though, because of their resistances, because engineers can build tools that kind of make up for the lack of specialists, they're not bad, even if you play them down at BR2. O honestly, they're, they're really not bad. The ability to survive headshots that should otherwise kill you for the German squad is amazing. And the ability to tank some body hits is, is pretty good on the, on the Russian squad. I really cannot complain about that. And like I said, coming off of the recent Steam debacle and dealing with the months of complaints that we have over how certain parts of the merge were handled, I think they kind of needed a win. And that kind of brings us into the April Fool's event. The April Fool's event, honestly, has been really good. I think that if they do implement it full-time into the game like they've talked about, uh, it actually has a lot of potential. Now, 
I would like the map to be a little bit bigger and there to be like more to it or at least I'd like there to be some variety in the weapon options on the board if they like randomized those but the flavor text between rounds was really cool some of the easter eggs in it were kind of neat some of the fun weapons that you could pull out of the box like the golden Sturmgewehr or the golden Thompson or the Super Mauser. Those were all pretty cool, pretty fun things. And I'm not going to pretend that people have forgotten about the Steam debacle, but it does seem like this has helped a lot with people getting over it. And it's probably good for the game. I appreciate that with this April Fool's event, they decided to update it and add a leaderboard. And I appreciate that they've talked about the potential future of it. That's that's all really cool stuff. Compared to last year, um, I'm not sure which one I prefer. I do like this one, and in general, I do like PvE content. I, I think it can be a lot of fun to take a break from the competitive side of things and just play things for fun. And to be fair, this is still pretty competitive. I mean, you're, you're, it's a survival game, right? You're trying not to die. But I can see where last year's event might drag on. After you ran around with the walkers a few times, eh. Like, the walker game mode was really cool, but I feel like if if you've got a competitive game mode like that, but you still have the base game running in the background, there, there probably needs to be a little bit more incentive to, like, keep doing it. I don't know, like, research-wise or whatever. I, I'm trying to remember exactly how it worked, but I, I didn't think that you um, could research stuff in there, because I think it gave you squads that were unique to the event instead of you customizing bringing your own squads in. I'm pretty sure it was one unique walker for each uh, of the three factions that were in at the time, or were popular at the time. It was uh, America, Germany, and Russia. And then I'm pretty sure that it came with uh, pre-set up squads. Um, which, to be fair, it was a really cool, really fun event, and some of the mechs were really interesting, and I'm glad that they've never implemented it, but the spawn point system that they used with the mechs was also really cool. But I, I think I would have played it a lot more if you could actually research your tech tree while playing that event. And that that also kind of comes back to this uh, most recent Breaking Dead event. I would have played this event a lot more than I did, and, and I did play it a fair few times, but I would have played it a lot more if it gave a more substantial reward towards the Assault Engineer event. Like, if you could realistically play, like, three or four matches in in the uh, zombie game mode and be done with the Assault Engineer event, I would have been all over that. Um, I think the problem, though, is if you have two events running in tandem like this, it makes it so that you kind of have to choose between them. And I think they need to be careful about competing with their own events internally in the future. I feel like that kind of detracted from it. At least for me. Like, the rewards that you could get from the zombie event, they were pretty decent. Gold weapon orders are always good. They're always useful. They're probably the pinnacle of things that they can give away, short of giving away a whole squad. And the portraits are cool. The silver's always nice to get, especially in the current silver economy. But, yeah, I really wish that I could have gotten points towards the Engineer event while playing that, because otherwise, the Engineer event just has so much more value. The reward track this time around in the Engineer event was just so good. For for somebody like me, right, if I wasn't recording videos about the squads that are in it, I would have had zero incentive for a normal event to do it if they're just going to hand me the, the event rewards at the end of the event. Like, assume that this is a normal event, right, where you just get the squad at stage 6 and stage 10, right? 
the only things then that I would be missing out on are 30 appearance orders and some hammers, which to me, it's like a no brainer. If, if I don't feel like playing the game that day, then I'm not going to. Right. But this time around, they put in two gold gun orders, a gold soldier order and a gold vehicle order. So even for somebody like me, who's done with the tech tree, who already had Stalingrad access, there was still value for me to go and play this event. And and again, like 20,000 points a day, or not, not a day, every two days, isn't awful. It's like a handful of matches, so as long as you're logging in and playing regularly, getting through it isn't awful. So, I appreciate that they did that. Now... The only thing that I think I would change about their event structure, and I, I'm sure it won't happen, but because I'm sure that they do this for a reason, but not the most recent New Year's event, but the one a year before that, where we got the Japanese soldiers with flags on their rifles and we got the Australian uh, dudes for, for the uh, American Pacific side. That event was set up in such a way that you could play the entire event theoretically in like a day i don't know if anybody actually did that because you did have to play a ton you i'm not sure like time and numbers wise if that was actually possible but the way the event was set up there wasn't time gating on it so every time that you hit the point threshold it reset and you could immediately push to the next threshold so for example, if we were to use it for the current event, imagine if you need 20,000 points to get stage 1, 40,000 points for stage 2, 60,000 for stage 3, so on and so forth, and you can just do all 14 stages in one go and just sit down and do match after match after match, right? Like, the overwhelming majority of people are not going to do that, but it's nice to have the option so that if you fall behind or whatever, you can do, like, two days instead of one. So, if I could change anything, I would bring back that system. And, like I said, the points were different. I think you actually needed, like, 50,000 points or something for a stage. It, it, it was, like, quite a few points, but you could do it all in, like, one go, and I think the event lasted for, like, a month. I kind of like these shorter duration events, though. I kind of prefer the events to only be, like, a week or two. I feel like if if you have to log in and you have to hit certain metrics, then it starts to feel less like something that you just want to do and it feels like more of a job. Um, even if it's something that, like 20,000 points, at least for me, is pretty achievable in, in like an evening or morning or, you know, whatever. But still, having to hit certain metrics every time I, I get on is... A little bit tedious. Regardless, let me know what you think down below. I think that this has been a pretty good event. I'm looking forward to see what they come up with next. So, hopefully the next event is at least as good as this event. I would really, really like to see a paratrooper event with some low BR German paratroopers. Right now, I know Germany is very strong, but... There's a huge gap right there. I, what I think the event should be is BR2 German paratroopers and BR5 Japanese paratroopers and just put them both in the event. Hopefully they follow the Russian format and you can toss whatever gear you want on them and they can flex up and down, but even if they're BR locked and it's just BR2 for Germany and just BR5 for Japan, I would be happy with that. Anyway, as per usual, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.